I want to quickly talk to you about how to get a credit card with no credit history. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Suda Kiwi Show. How are you today? Hope you're doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you're to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about how to get a credit card with no credit history. So, you've decided to get a credit card, right? So, you're responsible with your money and you're confident that you can make the monthly payments. But <laughs> there is a problem. You don't have credit history. You don't have a credit history. This is like a record of your past financial activity. So here is where things can get tough. You might not be able to get a card without a credit history, but it can but it can be hard to establish a credit history without having a card. Now, please don't panic. It is possible to get a credit card when you have no credit history. So I'm going to actually break it down for you how, do you, how you can actually do it. So today I will give you 10 simple steps to help you easily get a credit card with no credit history. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, trust me. Number one, you want to get pre qualified. You want to find out if you are pre qualified. So, you want to check for uh, pre approval offers before you apply for a credit card with no risk to your credit score. And the thing here is that a few major credit card issuers have online pre qualification tools that allow you to see if there is a credit card available for your credit profiles. Okay, so you uh, so this pre qual would not hurt your credit score. And uh, if you eventually follow through with, with a credit card application, that hard inquiry will show up on your credit report and has the potential to lower your credit score. So you first want to look for the pre -qual, for a pre -qual card, okay? And here are a few credit card issuers that offer online pre-qualification. So you have American Express, you have Bank of America, you have uh, Capital One, you have Citi, and you have Navy Federal Credit Union. One thing I want to see here is that pre-qualifying for a credit card doesn't guarantee approval though. Other factors such as your income could cause you to be denied for a credit card for which you have been pre-qualified. So if your credit card application is denied, you'll get a letter in the mail that tells you the specific reasons why and you can use the information in the letter to decide what you want to do next. Some credit card issuers will even just send you an email. No letter, just an email. So first step, you want to get pre-qualified, find out if you are pre-approved. Second step, you want to find banks that will approve you with no credit. Yes, s s such banks do exist. So people who are just starting out with credit often have the most difficult time getting approved for a credit card. Okay, And this is because, as I said earlier, most credit card issuers require applicants to have some form of credit history, including um, a credit score. And they need uh, and they need that to approve a new credit card application. So, there are credit cards for people with no credit. So I'm show I'm showing this to you right now on the screen. So you have a uh, Wells Fargo Cashback College. This is the best overall in our view. Best for students. Best on security and best with a low APR. Great card. Wells Fargo Cashback College. Second card. Discover it. St student Cashback. This is a wonderful card for it earning rewards you have the best secure card discovery secured you have the best for avoiding fees the apple card and the best for learning about credits the journey student rewards from capital one so those are five credit cards that are are there for people with no credit the third thing you want to do you want to get a student credit card so if you are a student you may qualify for a student credit card and these cards are designed specifically for college students who may not have enough income or credit history to qualify you may have to provide proof that you are enrolled in a qualified college or university so there are several great student credit cards you can choose from what you want to do here is you want to narrow down your options by comparing student credit cards based on the fees very important interest rate and other perks and some credit card issuers allow you to use scholarships grants or work study as income to qualify for a credit card 
and depending on the issuer and the product, you may not need a long credit history or a high credit score to even qualify for a student credit card. So one thing I want to say here is that you may be able to even uh, build credit by using a student credit card responsibly. One thing I want to say here is that you you can go for the Journey student credit card from Capital One. You also have the, the, the Discover It student cashback. Those are pretty cool. And uh, those and many others a student credit card works just like a traditional credit card so if you can if you carry um, a balance on your card you'll have to pay interest on your purchases step number four you want to apply for a store credit card retail store credit card issuers have a reputation for approving credit card applications for people with no credit so you are more likely according to our research to get approval from uh, the closed loop cards that do not have a visa or mastercard brand all right so now one thing you have to be aware of is that is that um, you will not be able to use a credit card outside that particular store but it will give you a chance to jump start your credit history okay be worried though folks because retail store credit cards have drawbacks such as low credit limits and high interest rates you want to keep your balance low and pay it off quickly to avoid racking up a lot of interest and uh, the best store credit cards on the market know how loyal shoppers may you know want to be rewarded so what you want to do is that you want to look at um, the the store credit cards that fit with your lifestyle with your spending pattern and you choose it based also on the fees keep in mind that you might only be able to use retail store cards in the store or group of stores that issue them that's something you have to be very careful and you can learn more by reading the the cards terms and conditions so here are a few store credit cards that we have found for you so we have a gap visa card this is great for clothing you have the best department store you have the, the Amazon Rewards Visa Signature Card, which is great for a department store, best for electronics, best for furniture, and best for home improvements. You have uh, the Macy's Credit Card. This is actually great for in terms of department stores and, and furnitures. You also have the, the Home Depot Consumer Credit Cards. This is a fantastic card also, especially if you are interested in um, home improvements store cards. And we also have found for you my best buy visa card this is actually great for electronics so here you have a constellation of uh, store credit cards that actually can uh, be great if you have no credit and you're trying to build credit again you might not be able to use the 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 credit cards outside of the the store ecosystem however those cards will help you build credit history and that's fantastic I'll be right back, right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are still uh, with us today. And I want to, I'm still talking to you about how to get a credit card with no credit history. Number five, you want to get a secured credit card. Secured credit cards are really the go-to cards for people who cannot get approved for a traditional credit card. And what distinguishes a secured credit card from other credit cards is that you may you need to make a security deposit to get a credit limit. All right. Now, nothing is wrong with having a secured credit card as long as you pick one that reports to the major credit bureaus and has few fees. We have actually covered this this topic on, on another show there are credit cards that report to all three credit bureaus so transunion equifax and uh experian and um one thing you have to think about is that many banks and credit unions offer secure credit cards if you have no credit history and here is how they work so you deposit an amount of money sometimes known known uh, as a security deposit and uh, the issuer uses that money to issue the card in other words the issuer holds the money as collateral all right and uh it depends your um your credit limit actually is equal to the deposit you actually put down so it can be 49 dollars 99 200 5 500 or 1000 and you can use the card to make purchases just like you would with other credit cards and by using your card your credit card responsibly 
you may be able to start building a credit history and actually be upgraded to an unsecured credit card. Number six, you want to get a credit builder loan. Folks, I'm still talking to you about how to get a credit card without credit, with no credit history. Number one, get pre-qualified. Number two, find banks that will approve you with no credit. Number three, you want to get a student credit card. Number four, you want to apply for a star credit card. Number five, you want to get a secured credit card. Number six, you want to get a credit builder loan. And uh, this type of loan is similar to a secured credit card. You take, you take out a small loan from a bank, okay, and you use the loan funds to open a locked savings account. So the loan is repaid with a small manageable payments over 6 to 24 months, helping you to build credit over time. The downsides are that you may have to pay the interest out of your own pocket for the loan, and you may, have, uh, you may not have any funds to use for anything else until you pay it off until you pay off the loan. So this is something you have to really think about. And uh, one thing I want to, before you apply for a credit builder loan, you will need to think about how much you can borrow, whether collateral is required for a loan, whether the lender performs a hard or a soft credit check, the loan repayment terms, the loan fees, the interest rates, and the minimum credit score or income requirements to qualify. Because if you really think about it, applying for a credit builder loan is kind of similar to applying for any other type of loan for the most part. You'll need to give the lender your name, address, phone number, social security number, and a date of, a date of birth. They may also ask about your uh, employment history, income, debt obligations, and how much you have in savings. The third, uh, the seventh tactic you can use if you want to get a credit card with uh, without with no credit history is to get a co-signer all right now you may have trouble jump starting your credit on your own so a relative spouse or close friend may be willing to help establish your credit so you can have an easier time getting a credit card in your name now someone with a job and good credit history may be willing to apply with you but Please, be aware that getting a credit card with a co-signer has drawbacks. For one, you have another person involved with your finances, watching your purchases, and making sure you pay the credit card. So, if you're not responsible with the credit card, if you miss payments or max out the card, for example, the co-signer's credit is also affected. So, you have to think about duality here. You're not alone. You're not in a single boat here. Okay. So, if you can't qualify for a credit card on your own, you could try applying for the, the your next of kin, as I said, or a friend, if the issuer allows that option. So having a co-signer gives the card issuer more confidence that any debts can be repaid because a co-signer could also help the applicants get better terms than they might on their own. Okay, now, being a co-signer is a big responsibility, folks. So you want to make sure your family member or friend understands the risk. Don't please don't don't actually uh, surprise people with uh, negative stuff with negative uh, situations. They need to be aware. You want to you want to disclaim everything before they actually co-sign for the credit card. And here are a few other things to keep in mind. The co-signer will be responsible for paying back your debts if you don't or can't. They may be responsible for any late fees or collection costs. Negative information like debts and late payments could become part of their current history as well as yours. So you're basically splitting the, the risks and rewards, if you will. I don't know if there are any rewards here, but you're splitting the risk. You're, you're splitting the downsides. Okay. Now, I want you to remember, not all issuers allow to, uh, would allow you to apply for a credit card with a co-signer. So you need to actually look for credit card issuers that will allow you to have a co-signer on your uh, application. Another way to actually uh, get a credit card with no credit history is to become something called an authorized user. What is that? Now, many credit cards allow an authorized user to be added to an existing account. So and as an, um, as an authorized user, the entire account history is added to your credit report, giving you the benefit of an established credit account. So once you have an active account on your credit report, it's much easier to qualify for a credit card on your own. So a relative, spouse, or a close friend may be willing to add you as an authorized user on an account. 
there is no credit check and it's not as risky as co-signing since you can be removed from the account at any time and uh, becoming actually becoming and this is fantastic folks i want you to pay attention here becoming an authorized user means you get a credit card linked to an existing account that you are authorized to use so the account could belong to a friend or family member it could be it could be uh, your dad or your mother whoever is willing to add you to their credit card account and um, as an authorized user you'll get your own card so you can make purchases with the account's line of credit but the primary cardholder is ultimately the one who is responsible for the account this is the, this is the uh, the big difference here many issuers report authorized users to the three credit bureaus TransUnion Equifax and um, Experian so if in that situation if the primary cardholder has good credit and uses his or her card responsibly being an authorized user could help you build your own credit history and being an authorized user can be a great way to learn how to manage a credit card so parents who are listening to me out there if you want to help your if you, if you have a teenager or you have a, a young adult who needs to get a boost at the start of um, at the start of his or her financial life you might want to start putting your your child on your credit card that way he or she will reap the benefits of your uh, responsible credit card use that's of course assuming that you yourself <laughs> are a responsible credit card user there are benefits for the primary call holder too if you have an authorized user because it can be easier to monitor spending when it's all on the same account and the primary call holder could, could earn rewards for your spending for the authorized user spending keep in mind that negative information like late or missed payments could also affect both the primary car holder and the authorized call or the authorized user trick number nine folks you want to find out what else you can do if you have no credit history so once you are approved for a credit card you want to use it responsibly so that you can qualify for better credit cards and loans in the future right you want to maintain a loan balance you want to maintain a low balance and you want to trade you want to pay the balance off in full every month to build a good credit history also you need to keep this other pointers in mind don't give up if you don't have any previous credit history you want to talk to lenders and ask if they have other ways to qualify for you for a credit card because some lenders believe it or not will consider payment history from rental or utility records and you won't know until you ask so it's all about asking it's all about being creative here it's all about i would say uh, demonstrating financial ability financial stability and uh, credit worthiness you avoid submitting a lot of credit card applications so if you are turned down for a major credit card even if it's a student credit card don't keep applying instead you want to look for a store credit card or a secure credit card choose this credit card ahead of time so that you know you're not desperately searching for a credit card that will approve you and you want to watch out for any car any credit card that guarantees approval without first checking your credit score that's probably a catch in the form of higher fees or a higher interest rate or even both and the the last thing i want you to think about here the last trick here you want to pre you want to prepare for your first credit card when we talk about credit cards as i said earlier you have to think about financial ability and financial stability those are the two things that you have to be very careful about and financial ability and financial stability are interrelated to something called income you got to have income so credit card issuers think about income requirements you must have sufficient income to repay your credit card balance especially if you are under age 21 the income you put on your credit card application must be your own you cannot use the income of your parents very important folks don't lie on uh, on a credit card application you cannot use the income of your parents spouse or other household members to qualify for a credit card unless you have reasonable access to that money income limits vary depending on uh, the credit card but you will need to make at least enough money to repay your credit card balance each month the higher your income the better chance you have at getting approved for a credit card all right folks this is it for today's conversation i was actually talking to you about how to get a credit card with without a credit history first get pre-qualified number two you want to find banks that will approve you with no credit 
Number three, you want to get a student credit card. Number four, you want to apply for a store credit card. Number five, you want to get a secured credit card. Number six, you want to get a credit builder loan. Number seven, you want to get a co-signer. Number eight, you want to become an authorized user. Number nine, you want to find out what else you can do if you have no credit history. And number 10, you want to prepare for your first credit card, especially when it comes to your financial stability and financial ability. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. Thank you.